In our last lecture, we talked about velocity and acceleration. Now, in this lecture, I want to talk about Newton's first and second laws, and I'm going to talk about how they relate to three equations that we'll talk about today. So last time we talked about four equations, right? The velocity equals distance over time, and then those three acceleration equations. In this lecture, we're, we'll talk about three additional equations. So to start with, Newton's first law is actually quite straightforward. It says basically that let's say we've got an object. Let's say in this case, we're going to use a sphere. We'll say this, there's a ball. And it says that an object at rest, such as a ball, for example, will remain at rest unless we apply some type of an unbalanced force to it, unless we apply a force to it that is not balanced by a force somewhere else. So for example, if we apply a force this way, but then we apply an equal force this way, the ball is not going to move. Uh, and so for the ball to move, it has to have a force applied to it. And that force has to be unbalanced. And so one of the things that we do is we draw force diagrams uh, to really help us to figure out whether a thing is going to move. Um, and for example, if we're told that a thing is not moving, then we know that the forces have to be balanced. So fairly straightforward, I think, a fairly straightforward concept. Now, the second half of Newton's first law, so we said that an object at rest will remain at rest, but an object in motion will also remain in motion. So for example, if this ball were moving on, let's say, a flat surface, and uh, it's moving at a constant velocity, right? Let's say the ball is moving at five meters per second. Uh, and if the ball is moving at five meters per second, it's going to continue moving at five meters per second. Uh, unless there's some type of an unbalanced force applied to it. Now, this concept is quite revolutionary, actually. And it's not very intuitive because in the real world, there are always forces applying to things, namely air resistance and friction. So the ball is going to roll for a while on a flat surface, but eventually uh, air resistance and friction, a couple other forces, are going to slow the ball down. But in an ideal situation, in an ideal universe where there were no air resistance, there were no friction, the ball would just keep rolling at a constant velocity. So in order for us to change the velocity of something, whether the velocity is zero and we want to, you know, we want to make it move, or the velocity is, let's say, five meters per second, and we want to either slow it down or speed it up, we have to apply some type of a force. And it turns out that the force we have to apply, actually, let me leave that line. So the force that we have to apply depends on its mass. So the equation that we use is F equals MA. So what this equation reveals, of course, we've got acceleration in the equation, and then we've got two new variables. And the units of uh, and the units of mass, of course, are going to be in kilograms. Of course, acceleration is still in meters per second squared. And so force, of course, is uh, the units for force are going to be kilogram meters per second squared, right? Because we can just multiply. Uh, we can multiply the units, but there's a word that we use for that, which is newtons. Newtons, again, are kilogram meters per second squared. And so we use the term newtons, or n. And there are a couple of different ways we can use this equation. So for example, if I, I tell you I want to accelerate the ball a certain amount, so if we were to leave acceleration constant, right, as we increase the mass, as the mass goes up, the, the force required to accelerate the object increases, which makes sense, right? Something heavier, you got to push it harder. You got to apply more force to it. Right? It's fairly straightforward, a fairly straightforward concept, I think. Same thing here. If, uh, if we increase the force we apply to something, and uh, you know, its mass is constant because it's the same object, then it's going to accelerate more. Right? Another fairly straightforward implication of this theory. And so this equation essentially represents it's a mathematical representation of what we call Newton's second law, which is to say that the force required to accelerate an object depends on its mass, right? So force, mass, and acceleration. This is a fairly straightforward equation. We're going to see it in some practice problems. Now, the second equation we want to talk about relates to the concept of work. That is to say, work equals force times distance. We don't have to put the star. We can just say FD. And work is a bit of a somewhat difficult concept to, uh, to explain, but essentially what it is is a force being applied over a given distance. So uh, let's say we've got a block that we want to accelerate, right? So we're moving this block from, let's say, from here to here versus if we're moving the block twice that distance, right? Well, maybe the force that we applied is the same, but in this case, the block moved you know, twice as much. And uh, so... The concept that we use to represent that is work. So again, work depends on the distance uh, over which a force is applied. And that, you know, that's represented by the equation work equals force times distance. And so another way that we can think of it, for example, is if we've got the block and we want to move the block from here, we want to move it up 
The distance that we move it up will give us an indication of the work that was done. So we'll do a couple of practice problems where we combine uh, the idea of the acceleration of gravity, right? Because the block, of course, has to be moved against gravity. Uh, and we use that to calculate the force, and then we use uh, we use this equation to calculate the work that was done. So we'll do a practice problem with that. Suffice it to say here is that work is a force being applied over a given distance. And the final equation that I want to talk about, or the final concept that I want to talk about, is something that we call power. We'll use this teal color to represent power. And power is going to be equal to work being applied over a given amount of time. And we did time in this color. So power, of course, depends on the time. Work doesn't. So for example, if, uh, if I took this thing, this block, and I moved it uh, from here to here, right? And it took me, I did it in five seconds versus if I moved it from here to here and it took me five days, work is not gonna change. We still did the same amount of work, right? We applied a certain force and we moved the block from here to here. But what is going to change is power. Power tells us how fast or slow a particular amount of work was done. And so the less time it took to do something, the more the power required to do it. And uh, the slower something occurred, the, the less power that required. So again, power is divided by time. So you know, the greater the amount of time, the, the lower the power, right? Because of course time is on the denominator. So let me go ahead and talk about the units of work and of power. So to start with for work, so if we were to write out the units, if we were to do that dimensional analysis, right? What we would see is that force of course is in Newtons. Right? And then uh, distance, of course, is in meters. So newtons times meters. right? And so uh, the units for work would be newton meters. But uh, typically, we call that joule. And so we're going to see when we get to energy that work and energy actually have the same units because in a lot of respects, they're the same concept or they're, they're the, same, uh, the same thing, just sort of conceptualized differently. Now, for power... I actually wanted to mention something here. So there's actually another equation that we can use for power. So let's go ahead and write that out here. So power actually equals force times velocity. The units for power are, of course, joules per second, right? But uh, we typically will abbreviate that as, so let's go ahead and use the color we want, as watts. So a capital W is a abbreviation for a watt, and that is the unit for power. So let me go ahead and label everything. So we'll say power over here, and then we'll say force is over here. And then finally, we've got work over here. Now, one final thing I wanna say about work. Work is, uh, you know, is only calculated with the force that is applied in the direction of motion. So what do I mean by that? So let's say I wanted to lift a box up in the air one meter. Right, so this is the box, and let's say we want to lift it one meter in the air. Now, uh, what's the work going to be done? So let's say the box weighs 10 kilograms. Let's say it's a heavy box. First of all, we want to calculate the force of gravity because we're going to have to oppose the force of gravity. So the force of gravity, what's the force of gravity? Fg is equal to the mass, which is 10, times, uh, times g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, f equals ma, right? So in this case, it's just 10 times 10, right? And uh, actually, let me go ahead and write the units because, uh, so we got 10 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. And uh, so the force that we have to exert is equal to 100, right? And that is 100 newtons, right? Or 100 kilogram meters per second squared. But again, we use newtons here. So we have to exert 100 newtons worth of force to lift the box. We said we want to lift the box one meter in the air. So in this case, we have to apply that 100 newtons over a certain amount of distance. So the higher we want to lift the box, the more work we have to do, right? The more, the, the longer the distance that we have to apply 100 newtons uh, over. And so in this case, if we want to do one, me one meter, it would be work equals 100 newtons times one meter. And actually, just because I want the, you know, the number to be a little bit different, we'll say 1.5 meters. Uh, and that's going to be equal to uh, 150 joules, right? Work equals 150 joules. Now, what happens, though, if you just hold the box in the air for a while? Well, if you just hold the box, the box is not moving, 
right? So technically, you didn't do any work on the box, right? Because displacement is zero. That is to say, you know, the distance or the displacement of the of the box of the object is zero. So the net work done uh, on the box, at least, is going to be zero. Now, your muscles themselves might be doing some work to maintain themselves in that position, but because the object didn't move, uh, there was no work done, right? And then uh, finally, what happens if, as you're holding the box, you start walking in a particular direction? So you start walking, uh, you know, five meters to the right, right? And then in this case, it's the same thing. There's still, uh, because the box was not displaced uh, vertically, right? Because you're holding the box in the air, um, and the box is not moving vertically. Even though you're applying a force underneath the box to hold it up in the air, because the direction of motion of the box is perpendicular to the force that you're applying, that is to say you're carrying the box, there is uh, no net work done on the box. I know that can get confusing, but do keep in mind that essentially if, uh, if a box is moving in a particular direction, or if anything is moving in a particular direction, and uh, a force is being applied to it entirely perpendicular to the direction of motion, then technically uh, there is no work done on the object. And, uh, that can get very confusing. So, uh, you know, I don't think we should go into too much depth into this for the MCAT. Just really be aware of the equation and how to apply the equation for the MCAT. So in this lecture, we talked about these three concepts, force, work, and power. And then we talked about the two equations, one of them for force, one of them for work. And then we talked about those two equations for power. And so that's all we're going to talk about here for force, work, and power. In a future lecture, we'll talk about work a little bit more in the context of energy and the idea of conservation of energy, because ultimately what energy is, is the ability to do work. And so we'll talk about that in a future lecture. So that's all we want to talk about here.